I'm pleased to call this afternoon's markup to order. We are here today to mark up H.R. 2352, the Job Creation Through Entrepreneurship Act of 2009, which reauthorizes and modernizes the SBA's entrepreneurial development programs. This bill expands the resources available to small businesses. In doing so, it will help spur job creation and economic growth. In their day-to-day -day operations, small firms are encountering many challenges, from declining revenue to difficulty securing a loan. Given these uncertain times, access to technical assistance is especially critical. In some cases, it can mean the difference between a business success and its failure. Today, small business growth is especially important. With unemployment at a 26-year high, we need entrepreneurs now more than ever. They are the ones who are going to reverse this trend and produce the jobs of our, our country needs. Small businesses have a proven record for job creation. After the recession of the early 1990s, small firms created approximately 3.8 million new positions. That number outdid large firms by half a million. During that time, it was often the layoff factory worker or the downsized corporate executive who decided to start a business. In fact, nearly 25% of downsized managers over the age of 40 started their own firms. The connection between economic growth and entrepreneurial development is clear. By helping firms increase the efficiency of their businesses, HR 2352 will enable them to not only maintain but hopefully expand their operations. I look forward to continuing the committee's work on this important legislation and now yield to Ranking Member Gray for, for his opening remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd like to thank you for uh, holding this markup on the job creation through entrepreneurial or entrepreneurship act of 2009. This legislation makes critical changes to the entrepreneurial development program at the SBA at a time when many small business owners across America are struggling every day to stay afloat. And I thank the chairwoman for moving very quickly uh, on this important bill. The SBA's entrepreneurial development program provides necessary tools for America's small businesses to not only exist but to succeed. Many entrepreneurs turn to this program for assistance in starting their businesses and for advice in helping their businesses grow. As we all know, the success or failure of small businesses in large cities and rural towns throughout our nation is a direct reflection of the economic health. Currently, small businesses are finding it increasingly difficult to meet their bottom line, much less become a thriving business. Creative methods are being employed by entrepreneurs throughout the country as they try to figure out for themselves how to survive in this new economic climate. The Job Creation Through Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship Act of 2009 contains vital components that work to increase coordination, streamline duplication in entrepreneurial development programs, and spur job growth. As we have heard from multiple testimonies by those close to the issue, increased coordination among these programs is vital to these services provided by the SBA. This legislation also modernizes the distance learning function of the SBA by requiring the development of far-reaching online courses tailored to today's entrepreneurs. This new function will empower small business owners in the most remote areas of the country. In short, this bill sharpens already existing tools employed by the SBA to cultivate one of our nation's greatest natural resources, its entrepreneurs. Once again, I want to thank you for holding this timely markup on a very important matter, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Graves. Are there any other members that wish to be recognized uh, for the purpose of opening remarks? Uh, Mr. Schuler. Madam Chair, thank you. I want to commend you and the ranking member, Mr. Grace, for your continued work on, in a bipartisan way as you can look at this uh, piece of legislation that's coming for us today. Um, both Democrats and Republicans are authors of these bills, um, came out of the subcommittee uh, um, uh, unanimously, and I think that's uh, back to the subcommittee's work. And I just want to commend uh, both you and the, all the staff for their hard work, their dedication, and what, uh, what it means to entrepreneurs and businesses across this country. So thank you again for your dedication. Thank you, Mr. Schuler. Mr. Schuler, are there any? Mr. Ney. Thank Madam you, Madam Chair. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. King. Thank you, Madam Chair. At the appropriate time, I have an amendment at the desk. Yes, uh, at the proper time. Uh, for the purpose of an uh, opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I appreciate your efforts to move this comprehensive package of legislation forward, and I especially thank you for working with me on the provisions that I authored to help our nation's 
veteran entrepreneurs. Okay. Madam Chairwoman, it takes a special kind of person to be an entrepreneur. Small business ownership involves leadership. It requires ingenuity. And in times like these, it necessitates resilience. So it's not surprising that as they re-enter civilian life, many of our returning soldiers, sailors, marine, airmen, and airwomen decided to launch their own enterprises. After all, these are the same attributes they've exhibited while serving our nation. In my district, we have the second largest concentration of veterans of any congressional district in the country. My district is home to Norfolk Naval Base, the largest naval base in the world. And in our community, there are countless veteran-owned businesses that are vital to our local economy. The measure that we are considering today will give veteran entrepreneurs everywhere the support they need to launch new enterprises and to grow existing businesses. The cornerstone of this effort will be a new nationwide Sorry. network of services dedicated to veteran entrepreneurs. Establishing this network will provide veterans with dedicated counsel, counseling and business training. These provisions also offer services to help veterans transition to entrepreneurship. I'm proud we are paying special attention to the needs of service disabled men and women. This legislation will expand outreach to them with tailored business training and will help them find and secure new business opportunities. This bill tackles some of the barriers to veteran entrepreneurship that stem from current economic conditions by creating a new program to assist veterans in accessing capital and securing loans and credit. We will help them overcome some of the most significant hurdles blocking them from becoming successfully self-employed. And finally, we will also help our veterans navigate the procurement process and compete more effectively in the federal marketplace. The Recovery Act is expected to create work in many sectors that are veteran dominated, like engineering, telecommunications, project management, and construction. This bill will help veteran entrepreneurs avail themselves of these opportunities. Madam Chair, our servicemen and women have served our country well, and they deserve a fair shot at the American dream. And for that reason, these provisions have the backing of both the American Legion and the veterans of foreign wars. But more importantly, they have the support of thousands of our nation's bravest veterans. I strongly urge the bill's passage, and I yield back the balance of my time. For the purpose of opening remarks, Mr. Uh, Luke Meyer. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and good afternoon. A special thank you to Madam, uh, Madam Chairwoman for the opportunity to mark up critical legislation aimed at making entrepreneurial development programs more effective and responsive to the needs of small businesses. At a time when small businesses are struggling, we must work to improve the usefulness of, the initi of these initiatives. Rather than relying so heavily on the government to spend our way out of this recession, we need to focus on ensuring that our small businesses, truly the engines of job creation, are able to utilize all the resources already available. <coughs> As a small businessman, I am pleased to support a bill that will assist many fellow business owners and employees throughout my district in Missouri and all throughout the country. Two out of every three jobs created in the U.S. are created by small business. And like every recession before, small business will lead the way to economic growth through determination and innovation. I want to thank my colleagues for their commitment to sponsoring legislation to improve programs that assist entrepreneurs with practical and technical skills needed to start and sustain a business. <coughs> As Louis Selly, CEO of the Northeast Veterans Business Resources Center in Boston, put it at a recent hearing on this subject, this committee has exactly the right focus by wanting to interweave these programs together and really force everybody to play in the same sandbox. And by making entrepreneurial development programs more effective, we can not only be more responsive to small businesses, but also better stewards of taxpayers' dollars. Madam Chairwoman, I certainly appreciate your help, and uh, Ranking Member Graves, I'd also like to give a special thank you to uh, Subcommittee Chairman Schuler for his fine work and commitment on getting this bill put together and brought to the committee. Uh, certainly has my support, and with that, I yield back, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman. For the purpose of uh, opening remarks, um, Ms. Fallon. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let me just say thank you to Representative Schuler and Representative Luckmeyer for their work on this important piece of legislation. I also want to th uh, say thank you to uh, Ranking Member Graves and, and yourself, Madam Chair, for allowing my bill, H.R. 1838, the SBA Women's Business Centers Improvement Act to be included in this job creation through Enterprise Act. As, as we may remember, this piece of legislation, language that I have, passed off the committee, passed out of the committee and off the floor last year 
and of course it got over to the Senate where it died a death. So we have included this piece of legislation back in this uh, bill. This section uh, of legislation rearranges the distribution of funding for the women's business centers to offer temporary assistance rather than permanent dependency on the federal government. In the mid-1990s, the federal government began awarding grants to women business centers that were operating as nonprofit operations in conjunction with institutions of higher learning. Originally, these grants were intended to be awarded to business centers in their first five years with the understanding that after this fifth year period had ended, the center itself would be self-sustaining. And although many women's business centers did meet this goal, some did not, and for a variety of reasons. And as a result, a greater percentage of the funding of this program had been consumed by the operating cost of potentially unviable centers rather than its intended purpose of establishing new women's business centers. So this was a drag upon the system and a viable business centers that were not truly serving an unmet need in their communities. And we felt like we needed language in this to add accountability, transparency within the funding, and to add measurable results. And I appreciate you including this language once again in this overall piece of legislation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for the purpose of opening remarks, Mr. Buchanan. First, I want to thank uh, the chairwoman and ranking member, along with Mr. Schuler, for their help uh, for including my legislation, a bill to moderate, modernize the, the SBA SCORE program and to the larger bill before us today. For years, the SCORE uh, program has been providing entrepreneurs with free, confidential, and valuable small business advice. Nationwide, SCORE has 389 chapters throughout the United States. They have 10,000. 500 volunteers. I know in our local chamber, which I chaired a couple of years ago, they had a huge positive impact on many of our small members there. My legislation will help ensure that qualified SCORE volunteers are available to provide one-on-one -on -one advice and counsel to small business owners in Florida and also across the country. Again, I want to thank the uh, Madam Chairwoman and Ranking Member for working with me on this proposal. I look forward to more such efforts throughout this uh, congressional session. I yield back. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shock, for the purpose of opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and I also wish to thank uh, Ranking Member Graves for moving this important piece of legislation through the committee. I also wish to thank Mr. Schuler and Mr. Lukemeyer for their leadership at the subcommittee level to ensure that this legislation is both a comprehensive and bipartisan approach to overhauling and updating a number of the programs upon which our nation's small business owners depend. I'm specifically pleased with the inclusion of Title VII of this legislation, which incorporates the language of House Resolution 1845, which I introduced to help modernize small business development centers. Small business development centers, or SBDCs as they're commonly referred to, serve as important resources for small business owners. SBDCs provide emerging entrepreneurs with the tools needed to successfully take their small business concepts into reality and provide existing small business owners with important financial and budgeting consulting and also assist in long-term growth and management. The investments made in the SBDC network provide a cost-effective way for us to help stimulate the economy while also enhancing American competitiveness around the world. The facts are clear. A new business is opened by an SBDC client every 41 minutes. A new job is created in the United States by an SBDC client every seven minutes. And in 2007 alone, SBDC clients created over 70,000 new full-time jobs. With the current economic conditions, more and more small business owners are visiting their local SBDC, seeking advice on how to best manage their resources. As such, I am pleased with the inclusion of the language of House Resolution 1845 in this Job Creation Through Entrepreneurship Act before the committee today. This legislation will do a great deal to continue to help develop those resources important to all U.S. small business owners. With that, I urge the passage of this legislation and yield back to you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members um, that wish to be recognized for the purpose of opening remarks? As the first order of business, we will consider H.R. 2352, the Job Creation Through Entrepreneurship Act of 2009, introduced by Representatives Schuler and Luke and Meyer. H.R. 2352 has strong bipartisan support, and I'm proud that seven members of this committee, including five members from the minority, contributed to it. 
This bill has the backing of the U.S. Women's Chamber of Commerce, the Association of Enterprise Opportunity, the National Small Business Association, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and the National Black Chamber of Commerce. In addition, a number of groups have submitted letters in support of the bills that comprise H.R. 2352. In Title I, this legislation establishes a Veteran Business Center program within the SBA. That provision will give entrepreneurial training and counseling to veterans. In order to oversee and implement this initiative, a director position is established. The person will report to the Associate Administrator for Veterans Business Development. In Title II, the Act creates a distant learning program that will be used to provide entrepreneurial education and training. This will draw on the latest technology and be of particular use in rural regions that may lack access to such counseling services. Title III establishes the Office of Native American Affairs within SBA and designates an Associate Administrator for Native American Affairs to oversee this office. The responsibilities of the office include developing and implementing tools and strategies to increase Native American entrepreneurship. In addition, Title III authorizes the SBA to operate a Tribal Business Information Center program. Title IV modernizes the SCORE program and asks its administrator to actively uh, recruit and maintain volunteer mentors. This requirement will ensure the program reflects socially and economically disadvantaged sectors of the population. In addition, Title IV codifies Title V codifies score responsibilities, including the establishment of small business mentoring and networking programs. Title VI modernizes SBA delivery of entrepreneurial development services. This requires the SBA to develop and submit a plan to Congress for creating jobs through its ED program. It also requires the SBA to measure program performance and job creation. Meanwhile, Title VII streamlines the Small Business Development Center program and establishes four new subprograms. Part of this process will refine eligibility guidelines, modernize nationwide guidelines, and place limits on unauthorized pilot programs. The, co the committee included specific language in the legislation to ensure funding for these additional subprograms is separate from core SBDC funding. That means the legislation can facilitate the development of specialized services for eligible centers while protecting core funding for the program. With a renewed emphasis on entrepreneurship, the nation can emerge from the current recession stronger and more resilient. This bill is a critical step in allowing that to happen, and I urge my colleagues to support it, to support its approval. I now yield to Ranking Member uh, Graves for his remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I pretty much, I think, said everything I needed to say in my opening statement, but I, again, appreciate uh, your staff and as well as my staff working everything out and the tone that's been set. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 2352. The clerk will report the title of the bill. To amend the Small Business Act and for other purposes. I ask unanimous consent that the bill in its entirety be open for amendments at this time. Does any member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? I wish to be recognized. Uh, the gentle lady, Ms. Dolcomper, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, I have an amendment at the desk. An amendment to H.R. 2352 offered by Ms. Dahlkemper of Pennsylvania. Page 10, line 25. I ask Sorry. unanimous consent that the amendment be considered as read. The gentle lady is recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. My amendment will allow members of the National Guard and Reserve access to the Veterans Business Centers. As a reserve military force, the National Guard and Reserves are called upon for domestic emergencies as well as to serve with our armed forces overseas. These brave men and women can be deployed for many months at a time and face unique struggles when returning to their businesses and other jobs. The Veterans Business Outreach Program is designed to provide entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial development services such as business training, counseling, and mentoring. These services are no less important for National Guard and Reserve members than other servicemen and women. This amendment is very simple, simply a fair and just way to honor um, those in the uh, National Guard and Reserves who served our nation. 
I yield back. Yeah. Um, both Mr. Graves and I are in support of the amendment. It's a straightforward amendment, and I want to thank the gentle lady for her, con her contribution um, on this uh, legislation. Uh, are there any other members to be recognized that wish to be recognized on this amendment? Hearing none, the question is on the amendment offered by Ms. Doug Kemper. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. Does any other member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? Madam Chair. I recognize the gentleman from Iowa. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. An amendment to H.R. 2352 offered by Mr. King of Iowa. Page 11. I ask unanimous consent that the amendment be considered as read and the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm um, having uh, spent nearly 30 years as an entrepreneur myself in small business and sold that off to my second generation oldest son. Um, I look at this proposal that's here and having worked with SCORE, by the way, and, and appreciating the work that they do, but one piece that appears to be missing to me is the, the lack of peer-to-peer -peer interactivity. And so what my amendment does is it establishes that we will have an online education website that's, that's part of this, but my amendment establishes an online network for use by potential and existing entrepreneurs to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer technical assistance. So uh, think of it in terms of uh, adding to the website a forum or even a developed frequently asked question component so that peer-to-peer, -peer, whatever particular business you might be in or considering going in, you could go in on that website, you could get your frequently asked questions answered, and then uh, if they're not answered, you could ask it in the forum uh, component of this so that uh, the other peers then could provide and offer those answers. And I would add to this that um, uh, according to a website that I perused here the other day, there they counted, these would be divisions and departments, but they counted 682 different federal agencies. Um, that is an astonishing number, and it is something that would add to the fear factor of any entrepreneur, and hopefully that uh, the addition to this good legislation of a peer-to-peer -peer component to the website would be something that will help uh, multiply the effectiveness of it, and with that, I would uh, urge its adoption, and I yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentleman for his amendment, and I want to um, support it. Um, I think that the purpose and the approach of the amendment is good for the legislation. It is critical that we use existing resources uh, to create new avenues for entrepreneurial education, and I think that this type of amendment really enhances uh, the effectiveness of the legislation that we have uh, before us. Um, Mr. Graves, do you have any um, remarks regarding the amendment? I don't. I think that uh, Mr. Thompson's the only one that does have some. Mr. Thompson. Thompson is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Ranking Member Graves. Thanks for moving forward this important package. Uh, you know, Mr. King's amendment to this section is a common sense approach to further expand technology to entrepreneurs in order to increase the dissemination of information across peer-to-peer -peer networks. And through providing an avenue of individuals to connect with each other, we decrease dependence upon the SBA ultimately and facilitate information sharing and real life stories and experiences uh, that benefit all entrepreneurs. And it reminds me of the saying, you can, uh, when you teach a man to fish, that's where the value comes in. I believe this amendment will, s will stand to benefit this section of the bill and encourage the committee to support Mr. King's amendment and yield back the balance of my time. The question is on the amendment offered by Mr. King. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. it the amendment is agreed to. Does any other amendment seek recognition for the purpose of uh, offering an amendment? Madam Chairman, um, Chairwoman, I have an amendment at the desk. I recognize the gentle lady from Illinois. Thank you, Madam Chair. My amendment is very simple. It will make surviving the spouses. The clerk will report the amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. An amendment to HR 2352 offered by. I ask unanimous consent that the amendment be considered as read, and the gentle lady is recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. My amendment is very simple. It will make surviving spouses eligible for assistance from the SBA Veterans Business Centers. This includes surviving spouses of armed forces members, reservists, National Guardsmen, and veterans. As the committee is well aware, most small businesses are family enterprises. Uh, surviving spouses of our brave men and women who serve in uniform should be eligible for assistance from the Veterans Business Centers, and my amendment 
which is supported by the VFW, will make this possible. I ask for the committee's support, and I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, thank you. I strongly support this amendment, and I urge its adoption. And I, Madam I'm Chair. Yes. Uh, ask to strike the last word. Yes, Mr. Schor. Okay. Uh, and I do appreciate the amendment. Uh, mm -hmm. For those who are familiar with serving in the service, and uh, uh, you know that it's not only those that wear the uniform that serve. The spouses do serve. The families serve. I think this is a very thoughtful amendment, and um, I would encourage others to support it as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back. Thank you. Are there any other members that wish to be recognized on the amendment? Hearing none, the question is on the amendment offered by Ms. Halverson. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is agreed to. Does any other member seek recognition for the purpose of offering an amendment? Seeing no further amendments, the question is on reporting HR 2352 as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it, HR 2352 as amended is reported. This concludes the committee business for today. I ask unanimous consent that the committee is authorized to correct section numbers, punctuation, cross-references, and to make necessary technical and conforming corrections on the bills considered today. Without objection, so ordered. This mark is adjourned. This markup is adjourned. You see, you, you have to take the... Uh, Take us to the Financial <laughs> Services Commission <laughs> that spent three days in one piece of legislation. <laughs> oh, God.